Is it the end of the Office 365 E1, E3 and E5 subscriptions? Microsoft modernized the way how the licensing model looks for the Microsoft 365 environment and the new apps. Moreover, new and new and new features are rolled out to the Microsoft 365 environment as a part of the subscriptions and as additional add-ons that you need to buy. But what's happening with these new products in the context of the Office 365, e-subscriptions and what could be possible impact for these products in the future? In this video, I would like to share with you a few thoughts I have about the future of the Office 365 e-plans and what you need to do to prepare yourself better if you are the user of such a subscription. As always, at this point, I want to also ask you to support this channel. If you would like this video, please leave the thumbs up. If you want to get the notifications about the new videos, please subscribe. And if you will have any additional questions, use the comment section. And to be frankly, the informations I'm sharing with you are more my thoughts rather than any official statement from the Microsoft perspective. And this is something that I already mentioned in few previous videos. So first of all, you can see that the cost of the Microsoft 365 subscriptions is not rising up directly by through moving the users to the Microsoft 365 E3 and E5 subscriptions plus by the model of the add-ons. So we have the premium version for the Microsoft Teams, for the Power Platform, soon for the SharePoint, and more and more additional products that you need to buy on top of the own subscription. And one of the elements that I want to highlight in this video is the case where there is more and more great products that are included to the Microsoft 365 environment, but Office 365 plans are not supported. I will share with you a few statements from the Microsoft about their products that there's no plans to include Office 365 E1, E3 and E5 plans to use these functionalities. It means that even if you want to buy them as an add-on or they landing as a part of the product, if you're using Office 365 E1, E3 or E5 subscription, you'll be not able to use them. I think this is the soft strategy from the Microsoft side to move the users from these plans to the Microsoft 365 plans on the business side or on the enterprise side using E3 or E5 subscription. And I could get it that if you started from these subscriptions moving to E3 or E5 could increase your cost strongly. But at the same time, probably if you want to utilize heavily what is included in the Microsoft 365 applications, there will be no other option. And one more thought, if you moving your data to the Microsoft 365 cloud, if you're using heavily Office 365 applications, probably it will be very difficult to imagine working with this platform in the long term without all security features that are included as a part of the Microsoft 365 E3 and E5 subscriptions. And again, don't be worried, you don't have to make any decisions right now. So let's see what kind of products in last months were delivered to the Microsoft 365 users and we already have the confirmation that Office 365 subscription will not be supported. So let's briefly go through the applications that lately were announced by Microsoft and subscriptions that you need to own to use them. So let's start from Copilot, which is Bing Chat Enterprise after rebranding. And you can see this subscription is available only for the Microsoft 365 E3, E5, F3 and business subscriptions plus for the education model. You can use this solution in case of of the Office 365 plans, but you will need to pay additional license as an add-on. And this is the first step I want to show you that Generative AI delivered as a part of Bing Chat Enterprise is not available for free in the Office 365 subscription. 
The next app which is super hyped nowadays is also Microsoft 365 Copilot. And if you will go to the FAQ, you will see that eligibility for this subscription is required to be owned for the Microsoft 365 E3 and E5 programs. In the future, there is a plan to also deliver Microsoft 365 Copilot for the Microsoft 365 business subscriptions but at the moment there is no clear vision or plans or timeline to also extend it for the Office 365 subscription. This is a very clear sign that the new biggest product on the Microsoft side will be focusing just on the Microsoft 365 subscriptions. Another great application that is provided as a part of the modern approach is Microsoft Loop. And if you want to use Microsoft Loop app as a part of your Microsoft 365 environment, you will need to own Microsoft 365 E3 and E5 subscription or the business licenses. And there is no plans to extend eligibility for this application for the Office 365 E3 and E5 plans. And the last application I also want to highlight something totally new, Microsoft Clipchamp, the application that allows you to edit the videos in your Microsoft 365 environment, maybe recorded in Teams or in Stream, is also provided only as a part of the Microsoft 365 E3, E5 or business subscriptions. And as you can see, this is some kind of pattern visible for the most of the new applications that are delivered as a part of the Microsoft 365. You can see SharePoint, OneDrive, Teams applications that are key foundation for the Microsoft 365 are still there. But at the same time, new apps like Microsoft Loop, Clipchamp, or Microsoft Copilot, or Bing Chat Enterprise are not included. I also checked what about Microsoft Syntax, Microsoft 365 Backup and Archive, and at the moment they are listed as the applications that will land the Office 365 e-subscriptions, but to be fair, I would monitor these elements. So what you need to do next, if your organization using Office 365 e-subscriptions, probably you should think about the strategy for the future. If you heavily utilize Office 365 applications, lack of that kind of application, and probably more in the future, could starting to be a quite gap for your business. At the same time, you can see these apps are not something that will stop you from working there. So there's no hard blocker for you, but I think it's worth to think about strategic plan for the next year that probably sooner or later, more and more worth to migrate to Microsoft 365 E3 and E5 plans. And as I mentioned previously, having all security features nowadays are really must have if you having all of your data in the Microsoft Cloud, it has to be secured. You need to put efforts to secure your data because sooner or later some kind of attackers could also try to impact your organization. I hope this video helped you to see the high level overview of the changes that happening in the Microsoft 365 subscriptions nowadays and my thoughts about Office 365 ePlans and their future. If you are the owner of the Office 365 ePlans, probably it's good to start to thinking ahead about your future and build some kind of strategy on top of that and secure the funding for any future investments. If you have any questions, share them in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.